first of all, no spoilers, right? Um, and, you know, I, I think we have a gentleman here with a question. How's that for a start? My name is Tony, and I wanted to ask Lupita specifically a question. You said in an interview a while ago that when you were younger, you were almost afraid to say that you wanted to be an actor. Um, my question is, when did that fear go away? And I guess for everybody, as creatives, there's always a fear of, of embracing what you have. How did you overcome that? Well, I th my. Uh, I think it, it came after I graduated from undergrad and I was in this crisis about what the rest of my life was gonna look like and my mother gave me this book to help me figure things out and one of the, ch one of the things that the book required you to do was to state in an ideal world, if anything was possible, what would you do? And I wrote down that I wanted to be an actor and that was the first step, just writing it down and then I went, to her and I said, I think I know what I want to do. And I uttered it out loud. And she was like, I know that. <laughs> and, uh, but I just hadn't had the, the courage to say it out loud. And saying it out loud was liberating and having my mother uh, support it, you know, was also uh, another step. And then um, once I decided and, you know, did what I needed to do and went to grad school, uh, I live with courage, which means that you're fearful, but you carry on, you know? And so, <laughs> working with Jordan Peele was, ter it terrified me. You know, I, I don't lie, because, you know, he said, with Get Out, I mean, I was just like, my God, you know? He's so intelligent, and he does such incredible things uh, with story, and to think that I was gonna be working with him next was just like, I couldn't even compute in my head. Uh, but I don't, I think it's not about getting rid of fear, it's about using your fear as fuel. So we would do, we would do, you know, we would have different days where these guys are playing the different roles, right? So on a day where they're playing the family, that was fun. <laughs> that was like everybody came and was being, you know, being their character, being kind of effervescent. Um, and on the day, but on the days when we played the Red Family, there was this different vibe <laughs> that was, and Lupita scared the shit out of me. <laughs> She'd be coming. I get like. I get. I just get word from her assistant. Like Lupita would like to talk to you. And I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> and I go into the little room that she's that we got her in. You know, and she'd be like standing in the corner, like. <laughs> and I'd like walk up to her, and she'd be like, "Craft services needs to be." <laughs> yes. Craft services needs to be improved on whatever you need. <laughs> no, but I did this just to say it was a crazy experience. Every one of these people on stage developed two characters, and not just in a two-dimensional way, in a three, four-dimensional way. And the, you know, I really got, I really got everybody's individual crazy out of them. And for that, I, I'm not forever proud. What is it like then to? develop this entirely different character because as I'm watching the movie, it took me a minute to realize, oh, these aren't actually a copy of the people. This is the same actor playing both characters. So I just wanted to know like, what it was like beforehand to develop that type of acting. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really a great challenge. And I think everyone up here took it as such. Uh, we took it as a challenge to create, um, like you said, not copies, but different versions uh, that were affected by the landscapes that they came from. So my own personal approach was to imagine a world where you can't consent to anything. And you have no consent, so it was almost like uh, a lifetime of being raped from the macro to the micro, from 
free will of choice to like have breakfast to who you choose as a partner. And I thought that it was incredibly sad and I wanted to capture that with Abraham. So I never actually saw Abraham as a villain. I just thought that Abraham finally got an opportunity to see the light, to come out and see the sky and actually see for the first time. Um, so it was never like I had to be Gabe or think about Gabe. It was looking at Gabe from Abraham's point of view. It was just like, you have all the things that I want. You get to talk. You get to express all the things that you desire. And I don't get that. You get to see. I have bad eyesight. And you get to wear glasses. So it was always just looking at them from a place of need while looking at the Wilsons from just comfort. I was just so happy <laughs> at all times. I got to marry the most beautiful woman in the world. Um, I got to have two beautiful kids. I got like, like the, fun, the most fun neighbors and coworkers. It was just, it couldn't be any better. And, and Gabe actually, to me, represented just comfort and privilege, so much so that it was literally and figuratively crippling for him. Um, and that's just the point of view. So that was my approach to him. Um, as you said, it was like kind of a, a fun challenge. But I think that the hardest part for me was really being able to let myself be uncomfortable. Because I, I just don't do that. Like I'll literally walk away from a situation and have confrontation. Um, so I think that... <laughs> Um, so, um, you know, Jordan helped me a lot with that, um, and I think that I'll definitely use that for the future. And now I'm like out of my shell now, so it feels amazing. I feel free. <laughs> okay. So, what they said, it's like you have to understand your character to do your character. For me, I'm very scared of this stuff. Blood, scissors, nope. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was working with Lupita, Winston, Jordan, Shahadi, Tim, Emma, it was like acting is just playing around with your friends. Well, in a serious way. <sighs> because my hardest part was the language. And also doing the Pluto, because I'm not that good at snapping my fingers. <laughs> I'm not gonna follow that. Why would I follow that? You wanna follow that? I didn't think so. All right. In this movie, there's a whole lot of references to Jeremiah 1111 and coincidences. My name is Jeremiah. Uh, I <laughs> Undertones or any kind of theological uh, meanings in, in your films. I don't know if you want to touch on that. And then just real quickly, too, I noticed with Get Out, the geography was purposely kind of vague. I know you had shot in Alabama before New York, but with this movie, it was all very geographically specific. So did you come up with the themes and then work your way into where it was going to take place? Or did you already know where you want to take place and then what themes can I explore in this location? These are themes, right? Themes. <laughs> now, you know, I mean, for me, it all kind of, it, it, the, my creative process is this conversation between my gut and my mind. So, uh, 
at, at, a, at in the beginning, usually what needs to happen is I need to start with something that uh, just I I'm feeling, whether it's a dream that leaves me with some, you know, just condensed feeling, or a, a fear that's just there, and then I take that and and. I, you know, I, I, I think about it, I try and analyze it. When I get sick of that, I take a break, I sit down, and I try to find inspiration. So it's this kind of, it's this dialogue within myself, and you know, I, I couldn't really tell you what comes first. Is it the place, is it the themes, is it, you know, uh, is it references to the Bible, or you know, uh, or movies, or anything, it all, it, it's all very fluid and analytical at the same time. So anyway, bad answer, but. <laughs> and just real quick, was Perfect Blue also an influence? I saw some Satoshi Kone, maybe Black, Black Swan. But, uh, but Black Swan, yeah, I love Black, Black Swan. And, oh, and Perfect Blue, yes, the anime. I, I love that as well. Yeah, you yeah, know what you're talking about. <laughs> so much to think about sometimes with some of the scenes that you go over in transition. And I wanted to ask, uh, when when the audience is leaving today, when they walk away from this one, what do you hope or expect uh, the audience is to walk away with as far as like processing the themes and the meaning of the film? You know, uh, it's a question I'm, I'm hesitant to answer because I think my, my, my favorite thing is the idea that people will leave ready to have a conversation with whoever they're with. And this is a film that I designed to be both, uh, to, you know, I, I have a very clear uh, meaning and commentary I'm trying to strike with this film, but I, I also wanted to design a film that's very personal for every individual. You know, on the broader strokes of things, um, the, you know, th this movie is about this country, and when I when I decided to write the, you know I, when I decided to write this movie, I was stricken with the fact that we are in a time uh, where we, we fear the other. Whether whether it is the you know <coughs> mysterious invader that we think is going to come and kill us or take our jobs, or the 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 faction that we don't live near that voted a different way than us. We're all we're all about pointing the finger, and I wanted to I wanted to suggest that maybe the monster we really need to look at has our face. Maybe maybe the the evil is us. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, it's about like genre and film because when you 
you talked about this as a smart film because you, um, a lot of films don't assume that the audience is smart. So when you get a smart horror movie, oftentimes people will start calling it suspense and they'll say, oh, it's not a horror, it's more of a suspense. And you saw that with Get Out. You see that with um, Silence of the Lambs and I've even heard that with Jaws. How do we address this or do we even address this? Does genre even matter when things like this? Great question. Um, you know, I, I'm obsessed with genre, and I'm obsessed with trying to both paint within the lines of the horror genre, but also to kind of push the boundaries of what that means. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, it's we as human beings are obsessed with categor categorization, we're obsessed with putting things in boxes to the point where, you know, the, 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 the debate of what genre Get Out was became the, the, the conversation itself. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's, the, the, my answer has a certain duality in it too. I love genre, I love things that are quintessentially horror. You know, at the same time, you know, who, who really cares? <laughs> Beautiful, and we're just we're so grateful for you for making this and for bringing it here. Thank you so much. Oh.